Hello, my name is Mark Anthony Dubose Jr. and I was born July 4th, 1986. Today, I want to make a continuation video on the whole concept of having a confident dog and what it takes to build that confidence in that dog. What, what is it actually, what, what do you need to do? Because it's something that I, I got a, an amazing comment that I have to say that I want to talk about because I want to continue to keep on talking about the same thing that can't nobody else build the confidence that you have with y'all's relationship. It's only what you are able to do with your own dog. No one could do it for you. And that's something that I think a lot of us have a disconnect when it comes down to dogs and working with dogs and seeing dogs and understanding dogs that someone else could do something for them and get them to respect you, care about you, and, and, and just have a bond with you. It's only what you do with that animal. And there's something that, that I want to talk a little bit up front about the whole concept of loving your dog and what we as humans do when we say that we love our dogs. You know, there's a whole other side of dog stuff that I pay attention to of the people that want all dogs gone off this planet. And I get where they're coming from because it's, it's all about, he's communicating about the, the, the dogs that are killing people, the dogs that are putting people in the hospital to the point that they no longer look like themselves anymore. And this is happening very often. And it's something that is, I'm going to say avoidable, but at the same time, it's something that we need to pay closer and closer attention to with what it actually takes to build a nice, trusting, loving bond with the dog. And it's not a matter of just giving it treats and giving it pets all the time. That is, in reality, not what dogs are looking for from us. They're not looking for just sitting and just petting them, petting them, petting them, good girl, good girl, good boy. That is not what they're looking for. And if that's what you're doing, thinking that you're building the relationship with that dog, you are failing that dog. You are, you are not giving that dog what it needs. And when it's not getting what it needs, it's going to lash out. It's going to do something. It's, it's going to get frustrated to the point that one day, maybe not the first year, maybe not the second year, maybe not even the third year. You're like, oh, my dog is so sweet. He's so amazing. But on that fifth year, something happens. And it's something that, that I hear a lot of people say. Someone sneezed. Someone coughed. And the dog just went in rage mode and just attacked the kid, attacked the human. And, and, and we're not giving that dog clear instructions of who we are and what we're all about and giving the dog what it needs. Because a dog that's, that's we're able to communicate and give its need, needs effectively, it's not going to want to retaliate and want to just savagely harm you and hurt you. Going from just being sweet to being just, I want to hurt you now. A lot of times we're, we're not doing what we need to do. And that one thing is not giving that dog the confidence of they can trust us, they can believe in us. And one thing that, that I get, that there's a whole training method out here that using, use this and use this tool and use this and, and punish the dog to get the dog to listen to you and force the dog into obedience to be able to listen to you. And I'm going to say that's why you have to continuously manage that. And for me personally, if I got a dog that's not sitting correctly and I'm having a, to punish it and correct it and force it to do such a thing and, and to continue to do that, I would be nervous of that dog inside of my house personally. Because that dog may have it in it where it says no once and it wants to challenge me. I, would, I, I just, I don't like that. I don't want that. And, and in reality, I was kind of taught a little bit of to do stuff like that. And that just doesn't fit with me. With the outside dog, do what you do, man. I don't, I don't really even, I don't kind of care. But while I'm sleeping and you're sleeping, you're sleeping in the bed next to me, I'm not going to have any kind of hostility going on with that dog inside of my house. Where it feels as if it's, it's going to get corrected or punished because it's not doing something. And that's, that's the main thing is building the confidence so that the dog trusts us and not building it in a way that it's just being, it's, it's, it's forced to pay attention, but it, it's desiring to pay attention to us because of just who we are, not because of anything that we actually are doing for it. But the one thing that we have to do is get the dogs through their fears and stop running away from those fears. The, the one of the best things, this is this, the, the number one thing is I'm going to say is to get your dog to be better with you is to put them in a situation that they're terrified of. Someone just wrote in and said, you know, I, I, I took my dog straight to the bus, the, uh, uh, the bus. I don't know exactly where you are, but I don't think we call it exactly what you're speaking of here, how, at least around my area. But you took it to a bus stop where buses are constantly going through. The dog is nervous. These, these things are beautiful to do. It's not the your dog is wild and crazy, barking like crazy at the other dogs. It's not wild and crazy, barking at other people. But just you, you start with simple fears. That may be an extreme fear in reality for, for a lot of dogs, but it's, it's something that's not like, say, really too much in danger. And, and it's simple. You start with the simple things first and you just sit there and you just chill. You just wait. You get you a book. You read something. You, you start flipping on the Instagram. You get on the Facebook and you just relax and hold your dog there and just relax. And we got all these things on our cell phones today to be able to entertain us. So there's no reason to do a two in one right now. Two and one, just do what you want to do on your phone and just have your dog with you. Pay it no attention. When the dog is stressed and moving and doing it, you're just not paying any attention at all. You're just going to hang out. You're just going to relax. Because when you start to pay attention, that's when you're, you're going to start to get, I, we get in our feelings. You see a dog that's stressed and you're just like, and when the dog sees that from you, that's when things get bad. But when you just sit 
and you just hang out and you chill, I am going to guarantee you this, the dog at some point, who knows how long, it could be five minutes, 10 minutes, it could be 18 straight hours. I wouldn't do straight hours, I would just do like hour and a half, two hours sessions. If they're still not fine with it in that two hours, you come back the next day and do it again for two hours. You come back the next day, you come back the next day. But I have, I've just rarely have never seen the dog with two sessions of doing something that they just get through it. So you stay there for hour and a half, two hours, and you just hang out, and the dog will relax. And once the dog relax, lays down, and just hangs out, that's when I give it a pet, say, hey, I like this, I like what's going on here. And then the next day, you do it again. Instead of it taking an hour and a half, the beauty that starts to happen is now it's 30, 45 minutes. And, and then things are good. Hey, uh, come here, guys. And then things are good. And then the next day, instead of 30, 45 minutes, it'll turn into 20, 15 minutes. And then it'll turn into two minutes. And then it'll just be instant that the dog is just good to go. And that's what you want to look for is to keep on pushing them through it, pushing them through it, pushing them through it. And not sitting there trying to toss some treats every second. I, I, I get it. The treats and all this stuff, it works. For some that know exactly how to do it, who, their timing is on point, they know what's going on, and that's, that's where I think a lot of us are failing because we're getting information from people that know dogs like they know the timing. You don't treat the dog in reality or click for the dog with your clicker when it's already in its sitting state. You do it in the motion of, and that's something that you, you need practice with, you need experience with. The whole concept of a pressure re release with the leashes, some people make it look so simple, and it's so easy, and it is when you do that often, when you do it all the time. But for the average person out here that's looking at your dog, you're gonna mess things up. So we have to do things that are not gonna get us jammed up and mess things up where we can just have good success over and over again. And the good success is just hang out and do nothing. Do nothing. You can't miss, miss the opportunity of giving them the treat at the wrong time. You can't miss the opportunity of giving them the correction at the wrong time. You can't have any unclear communication going on. It's gonna be very clear, nothing, zero. And, and when you get in, uh, where's my dog, Oreo. And when you get into that stance, oh, uh, come here. And when you get into that stance that you're, uh, uh, Johnny, get down. Oreo, come here. Oreo, get down. And when you get into that situation that the, the dog is finally just hanging out, that's when I'll give it affection. Because when a dog in reality is, is, is chill, they're, they're relaxed, they're, 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 they're just down, that's the time that you give them a treat and you give them a treat. When they are just hanging out, they are just, just relaxing. If you're a person that already carry treats on you all the time and they already know you have them, that's when you wait. You wait until that dog is like got one eye open and it's just hanging out, it's just about to take a nap and you give them a treat. It's gonna jazz the dog up a little bit, but then you just wait. You wait until he gets back into that relaxed, hanging out state, and then you give him that treat. A lot of times that, that, that can fast track some stuff, but it's just, it's not needed. It's, it's really just not needed. And I like to do things that are simple and easy, that I don't need to like load up in this, have this, and don't worry about my treats or moldy this, and cut this, and have this. I just, I just wanna be able to hang out with my dog and chill. But some things can, can just make it, say, simpler for the human and the dog, but it, well, we gotta do it the right way. And the right way is to push them through what's going on. When, when you're at that bus station and the dog is flipping out, you just wait. I'm guaranteeing you the day after day after day after day of doing this, it's gonna get better, faster, easier, smoother. And then the dog is gonna look at you and say, man, you got me through that. You got me through that. Like, you're not affected by this and you pushed me through this. And the dog's gonna kinda look at you and say, well, what else can this person help me out with? Because I'm also scared of this over here. So, so you push them through that. You're like, okay, you're nervous of, of people walking, too many people, crowded areas. You, you find you a place where people are walking. And, and the one thing that I'm gonna say is, is, is I, I wanna get into your brain and let you really understand this. I know when your dog is looking like a mess, it's barking, it's lunging, it's doing wild looking stuff, and you got people looking at you. I'm, I'm gonna tell you this. The people are gonna look at you and they may at dinner time to their spouse say, hey, you know what, I saw a crazy dog today. But the next day they forgot about you. A week later, they don't even know who you are anymore. So don't worry about it. These, don't worry uh, how you're looking and what's going on. Just know that you wanna focus on your dog and get your dog better. And the fastest way to get through it is just to go through it. So your, your dog is scared about trucks and some, some of y'all dogs, I've, I've worked many dogs, I don't know what it is about garbage trucks. I hear this so often. I even got a phone call about this. Garbage trucks, your dog is scared of garbage trucks. I would literally go to the place where they're, they're, they're about jumping off. So you see them just driving by, driving by, driving, and just hang out, and just hang out. And your dog is going to get through it. Don't say any words to them. I wouldn't say good. I wouldn't speak. When they're calm, I would touch. And that's it. And then once they get up and they're like moving, I'm just, I don't know what's going on with that. Let me look back at this telephone. And your dog is going to sense that. That you're like this disconnect going on. That when the dog is, that's because the dogs want to do everything for us. They, they want that leadership. And when we just like, I'm not paying attention to that. That's saying, that's a huge statement to the dog. A huge statement of you're clearly not doing what I'm looking for. 
And it, and, and it doesn't need to be in a such damaging type way, in, in, a, in a ruthless way. That's why I like to just to do nothing. I don't want to use least pressure. I don't want to add or do anything so, so that we're not having any conflict. And then you just keep going. You keep pushing them, keep putting them in places. Every single day, the, the, the number one thing to be able to get the dog to get better is to push them through these issues and just hang out. And then something that I, I hear this a lot, and I used to get this issue with myself from a dog trainer to dog trainer, and I had to listen to trainers explain something to me that didn't quite make sense to me. And that's the concept of how do you get people to follow through with this stuff? And, and I was realizing, and I'm just going to say this straight up, and this is the part of the business that I don't appreciate, but I understand human beings. And human beings are just human beings, and we, we just what we are. We value what we pay for. When we don't pay for it, we don't do it. So if, the, if, you're go, if you got clients, you got weekly clients, you got clients that are doing work for you, and they're not doing any of your follow-up, you're not charging a fraction of what you need to charge. If you're coming in at 20 30 50 $60 lessons, the people are, it's just, I hate this about, I don't want to use the word hate, but I just dislike, I can't stand this part about us as human beings. That if I come in and I charge you $4,500, you're going to listen and you're going to do all the homework that I tell you to do, guaranteed. I just guarantee that because I see this every time. But if I come in and say, I'll hook you up and I'll give you five lessons for $150, you, you, you never follow through. You, you, I didn't have time. I didn't this. I didn't that. That's one thing that that just is. It, it, I don't like it in my gut, but it is what it is. It just it's it's what has to happen, because you you, you don't keep up with it when 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 there's just no there, what is it called skin in the game, and that's something that is that is challenging. But for someone who just really wants to get something better, the the main thing that every single dog trainer out here is going to say and do is say, you have to follow up with this. You have to keep doing this. You have to do this. You have to do that. You have to go out and do the walks. You have to, you have to, you have to, you have to. Those are the trainers that get the most success on this planet. I watch them over and over, over and over, and I keep seeing them. It's not about the techniques. It's not about any of that. It's about doing what it is they're saying. And the problem that you're, you, you would fail is if you're not doing what it is that person is recommending you to do. And the same thing with that. If you're not comfortable with what that trainer is telling you to do, then yeah, it's not going to work. But that needs to get figured out up front in the consultation before any kind of checks and any kind of funds are being transferred between each other. And that's, that's where there's a fantastic book that I, I listened to of a, of a trainer that, that I look highly up to, the, the lead instructor of my, my class I went to in the dog training school, that he, he made a whole book. And it's for free on the YouTube of what to look for in a dog trainer. And it's got some really, really dang good advice in there of what you should be uh, uh, focusing on and figure out what questions that you should ask. Because people ask me questions all the time. And it's like they try to see where I'm at. And I, if they stumble into fumbling, then that may not be the person for you. But, but it's just the main thing that every single trainer is, is requiring is you follow up with things. And that's why a lot of trainers today, which I appreciate, they're, because of the COVID stuff, it, it has made people step their game up with what they do. Because we're no, we were no longer allowed to go to the facility to get the work. So the trainer himself or herself weren't able to, put, to hold on to the leash. So it's a matter of the, the, the trainer speaking some over Zoom calls even. You got to do this and you got to do this. Hit me up later on when you got it done. But if it's just that free advice, it's it's just the unfortunate thing with us as human beings that we just we 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 get lax a days ago. We're just like eh, whatever. But I'm telling you, when you wrote a fifty, forty, five hundred dollar check up front, that's another thing. That's how all personal training works and all training in reality works. They they want the whole balance day one, and that forces you to have to do it. That's why all these gym memberships they they force you. You got to pay it all right now. It's nine hundred dollars for the year. They they don't really like that that. And if it is a monthly payment, there's a contract on it that you are guaranteed to have to pay this amount, even if it is a monthly payment. And that's how everything works because because that's how they know that you're actually going to get success. You're actually going to follow through. You're actually going to get stuff done. That's just us as human beings. There's a fantastic book, the the forty eight laws of human nature. It's a book that's like this thick. But if you read it, you just understand a lot of this stuff. It just is what it is. Whether you like it or you don't like it, that's just the way things work on this planet. That's why it's hard for a lot of us to find help with trying to get anywhere with our dogs from watching something on YouTube. Because we hear it and we're just like, eh, yeah, whatever. But I'll guarantee you this. You, you send me a, a $1,000 in my cash app, you're, you're gonna be, your dog's not going to be reactive anymore. You send me $4,500 from cash app, you're going to have a really, really nice dog that's going to be very, very obedient to what you're looking for. And just gonna, it's gonna, you're going to be able to have real good, clear communication with it. I guarantee you that. Because once that starts to happen, <laughs> it just is what it is. But if, if, if you're not willing to put in the work behind it, you're not going to get any success. No one out here is going to be able to do it for you. And that's the thing that the dogs are begging for us. They're begging for us to just say, hey, I'm struggling with this. Can you help me? I'm hurting with this. Can you help me? Your dog is in the backyard just digging holes and digging holes and digging holes. He's just saying, I need help. I need help. 
I, can you help me? I need to do something. Can you tell me to do something? Can you show me something? Can you guide me somewhere? Your dog is just in the backyard just barking, 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 barking. And you're just, the dog is just saying, I help, help, help. Please, somebody, come, help me. I need something. Please, I need something. Someone run me. Someone do something. Someone make something happen. That's what's going on. Your dog is in the house just chewing everything up. Your dog is saying, please help me. Please help me. Please help me. Please let me do something. Please take me somewhere. Please make me do something. That's just what they're constantly saying. All these behaviors that they're doing, they're just they're, they're begging for us to do something for them. Every, especially the destructive stuff. If, if you get to the point that because it gets in your feelings and the dogs see that. They, it, a certain shoe, a certain couch. Uh, uh, I work for some people, the, the dog attacked the sprinkler system. You, the sprinkler systems are not just simple, they're, 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 they're extensive. And you gotta bring in a, a specific professional to start working on this, so they got specific minimums. So it's no longer just something, a quick, easy fix. So the dogs get in there because it gets us, it gets us to react. It gets, oh, I gotta do something. And the dog's like, man, he finally got up and gave me some, some attention. I know how to get his attention. Let me go chew up all his shoes. Let me go take out all her dresses out of her closet. Let me go ahead and just, just mess the bed up every single day and just d dig holes through it. I know how to get their attention. And the more and more valuable it is to us, the more and more that they just, they, they just push, they push it, man. They push it. That's why I mean, this, this new puppy I got, she's a, a, a chicken killer. She just goes and gets them. And, 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 and I, I know why already today. Because the, the amount of energy that's given into her doing that, she's like, hey, hi. Because <laughs> the last one I just got. And, and y'all still worrying about how to get your dogs not chasing chickens. You have to let them chase them. You have to let them get them. You all, you, my best method is to let them kill one because you have to catch them in the act of. Dogs are sneaky and they do it behind your back all the time. And when they do it behind your back, you can't, you can't do anything about it. You can't make a noise about it. You just see dead chicken, you're just like, oh, that sucks. That's unfortunate. You can't do it. You have to catch them in the act of. So the best thing is to have one and... <laughs> I'm gonna say something ruthless right now, but just we gotta have we gotta do something to help some people out because you got these chickens. But there's free roosters out there, a lot of them, and and their dog can eat it. So go get the free one from someone that has extra, or pay the five dollars for it, knowing that unfortunately your dog is is gonna it's gonna kill it. But you want to catch them while that thing is in its mouth. You're gonna say to that dog, "No, I don't want that." And the dog's gonna look at you like, "Oh." Oh, okay. They always, they snap out of it, but they're just doing it to catch our attention. They're doing it to, to, to like, look at this because once it's dead, we're just like, oh my goodness, why did you do that? that? That's how it is. And the dog's like, hey, what's up, man? How's it going? How's it going, buddy? Like, I see you, but you're, you're frustrated. And that frustration comes to your dog is like, I don't even, the dog don't care. It's like, let's do something. That's what the dogs are looking for. And that's how we're able to build that confidence on that dog because it knows, it trusts us that we're going to do something with the, with the problems and the issues and the, and the, the energy and the, the everything that it has that we're able to fulfill their needs with everything. I keep watching this dog that I have. This, this is a very nice dog because she, she's not no pet dog. She's like my Oreo, my border collie here. She's very, very high energy. She's very, very moving. She's, she's just super, super active. And day one I got her, she was just, she's in that crate just flipping out. Now today she's already relaxed hanging out because I'm working her every single day. And this dog, it, this, is, this is eight to 14 miles of walking slash running every single day I'm taking this dog on. And it's something that not a lot of people keep up and that's why I specifically got this dog because she can do stuff. That's what they're meant, bred to do. That's what they're meant to do. So I'm giving her what it is that she's meant to do and she's just loving it and she just chills out. She knows for a 100% fact Maybe not 100%, but in her brain at least, I'm gonna go and do this tomorrow. This guy, when I get in this van, I load up in this crate, we're gonna go do something that's gonna, that's gonna give me all my energy out, that's gonna get all my stresses out, that's gonna get all my worries out. We're gonna go somewere and he's gonna, it, I may not like it, I'm saying with the dog's brain, I may not like it because he may put me in something that I'm stressed with, that I'm worried about, but he's gonna show me that it's okay. And I could trust him because he keeps me safe every single time. And then that just gets better and better and better and better every single day. Every day that gets better. Every day. And the thing is, is you got to do something every single day. Every day. Every day. There's no days off. That's one thing I learned real quick. 15 seconds of moving out here. There's no days off. This cold that just came through here, my water all froze up, so I'm hand carrying five gallon buckets of water everywhere to make sure everybody's drinking. I don't know if y'all know what cows drink, but a cow will drink. Oh my goodness, they drink some water. So I'm out here moving water all day, just, just moving it, doing this. It's freezing out here. It's cold out here. And we, we ain't used to that here in Texas. I see y'all videos, y'all got y'all snow, but we don't get that here. So when it happens, it's, it's foreign. Like today is 80 something degrees. 
it's just it's super strange out. It was 10 degrees, like literally 48 hours ago. And today, it's it's it. it my van almost it was like 88 degrees. It's, it's just it's just wild. But that 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 doesn't mean that it's day off. That doesn't mean that I can't do something. That means that we still have things to do. We still got to follow through with stuff. We still have to make it happen. And when you start to do more and more every single day, your dog is going to count on you and rely on you that you're going to be able to take care of it. And then your dog is going to look at you with that utmost level of confidence, knowing that you hear him or her you see them you appreciate them you value them you you are looking at them as they are a, a, a member of what it is that they are to us they are a member of our families they're they're a part of us that we're, we're we're taking care of and it's 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 something that's that's there we have to do it we have no choice if you decided to go to the the, the rescue or the the adoption place to sign your name you you signed up for that and, and it just is what it is. You have no choice at this point. You have to take care of it. Knowing that this isn't just some set it and forget it. This is something that we're constantly working on. And as for me, the, the beauty of what dogs bring over everything else out here, the beauty of what dogs bring, because they are able to be able to just amplify our lives. They are able to make us uh, uh, do what we say and be, be about a person that we really want to grow up to be able to become. They're not just, you can't just feed them and think that it's good to go. I can do that with chickens. I can just, this, these guys, I just feed them. I put feed, I put water, they got automatic water. I just put feed, feed in there and I move the coop here and there and, and they're good. I don't need to do nothing, nothing with them. I don't need to entertain them. I don't need to play with them. I don't need to hang with them. I don't need to talk to them. I don't need to, to work them. I don't need to nothing, nothing. But that's not what dogs are. Dogs require that we do stuff. And the more stuff that you do, the more confidence your dog is going to have. The more confidence your dog has, the more dog, your dog is going to trust you and respect you. The more your dog respects you, you, you don't need to worry. You can go wherever you want, do whatever you do in any situation, in any scenario, and that dog is going to hang out and chill with you because it's going to look at you like you are just the world's greatest thing on the planet. That's what you want from your dog. Not to think that because this is an unfortunate thing. When I hear all the time, the dog's running away, dog's running away. I put my dog in the backyard and it's gone. To me, that's just the dog saying, I need to find somewhere else to go because I'm not getting my needs met here. It, the, the, the story is the same almost every single 99% of the time. The dog broke out from the backyard and I don't know. Because the dog was back there unattended and it just took off. I can leave my dogs unattended and they stay here because they know. They know something good is going to come at some point, at some moment. They know for a fact they're going to get good food. Not every day, but I feed them almost every day. But uh, they know they're going to get good food. They know they're going to get a good place to hang out. They know they're going to be able to run and do some fun stuff. They, they know all of that. They, they can count on it because we kept doing it over and over. So they have no needs and no cares to go anywhere to do anything. But when the dogs are just trying to leave you, that's, that's where I'm saying we, we have a disconnect of what we're actually doing, where we say we love our dog and we're, we're putting love into our dog as opposed to what the dog is actually looking for with that. The dogs, in reality, are not looking for our love and affection. They're looking for our, our, our guidance, direction, and respect. That's what they're looking for. They're not looking for more treats and more hugs and more kisses and, and more of that. They're looking for us to, for one, respect them and understand that they're capable of doing some incredible things and, and to, to guide them to, be, to follow us. They're the, they're the one thing that's going to follow us. That, that's what they're looking for from us. They're not looking for kisses. The more kisses you give it doesn't mean that your dog cares about you. In reality, just in my personal experience of what I've seen, the dogs actually <laughs> think less of you at that moment. They, 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 they don't, most of them don't like, it seems like they like it. And I'm going to say again, a lot of times we're looking at these dogs and we think that the dogs like certain things. But a lot of it, the dogs just deal with it and they, 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 just, they just put up with it, man. They put up with it. They'll, just, they'll, they'll deal with you. But the, 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 the true test that I'm going to say here is if your dog is just dealing with you, drop the leash outside and just see what they do. If your dog just goes, goes, and goes, and goes, your dog don't care about you. You should be able to say, hey, come here. And the dog comes right, especially in a weird foreign place. The dog is going to come back to you. But if the dog does not care about you, it's just going to go. And it's going to go. It's going to go. It's going to take off. It's not coming back. It's not even thinking about coming back. It's, I'm going to go find someone new that's going to give me what I'm looking for because back there, that, I'm not getting what I want. And, and it, it's very unfortunate. It's very unfortunate that, that I'm going to say the, the number one way to get your dog to really just stay with you, hang with you, stop reacting to everything is to give it what it's looking for. And that's to build its confidence up. Get them out of the fears that they are in. Get them out of the issues that they're having with the, the unsureness of what's going on. The dogs are confused a lot where they're like, do you want me to bark at them? I don't know. Should I or shouldn't I? Should I or shouldn't I? And the, the, we, we, staying chill and doing nothing is going to 
eventually get the dog to understand, okay, you must, you must not want this. Some dogs have been doing this their whole life. So it's going to take, so can't teach a, a new dog, old, uh, old dog, new tricks. This, this is the method that I'm going to say is if a dog has never learned sit at eight years old, you could teach it sit. That's easy. But if a dog has always been downing when you say the word sit, it's going to be very hard to flip that around for that dog to understand, okay, this is what I want. So if the dog has been reactive on leash, doing it for the past two years, do not think that in these videos you keep watching, oh, five minutes, that I got my dog fixed. I watched at least, man, I don't even know how many, I have to count it, at least 30 videos today. A little short, little two, three minute videos of how to get your dog on a loose leash walk, how to get your dog to stop reactive in, in five minutes. It's, it's, I don't know what it is with the five minute number. Everyone's got five minutes. You could look up thousands of these videos. In five minutes, your dog's gonna stop this. That is not real. For, for that one-off random dog, I got you. But the one that's in your house that's been reacting with you and, and doing with you, like I, I could probably take your dog and do that. But with you, you and your dog, me and my dogs, to get my dog to stop doing that, that that's gonna be one of, one of the most challenging things ever. It's like, me, it's like me to say to my border collie, don't jump on me more. So a lot of people probably like, this dude got his dog. I let my dogs jump on me, except Johnny. He just too dang big and his paws are huge. But uh, all my dog, I don't care, my working animals, not my pet dogs, my pet dogs cannot jump on folks, but my working dogs, this here, my shepherd, and now my, my new Dalmatian, they can, they can jump all on me, I don't care. But it'd be for me to say to this dog, after five and a half years of doing that, since, the, it, since the, I got him away like 10 weeks old, and say to him, I don't want you jumping on me no more. That's not gonna be easy. That's, that's gonna be hard in reality. That's gonna be flushed, that's gonna be aggravating. That's gonna be very, very challenging. And the main thing is to, to convince them to stop doing that, know that it's gonna take time. Don't just, I want it now. It doesn't work that way, it doesn't. And I'm telling you, the more that you explain to them what it is that you don't want, and the more that you stay patient, the more that you stay calm, the more appreciation your dog is gonna give you at the end of the day. The more your dog is gonna love you the real way, not based on what we as humans think as just giving them hugs and giving them treats, but the way that the dog respects us. Respect is what these animals are looking for. And that's something that we, we're, we're disconnecting with understanding animals. I cannot convince my bull to move and do with, with just throwing treats and doing it. It's respect, he knows. When we're low on food, I got you. When you need some water, I got you. When you need a new space to go, I got you. When it's cold, I got you. Anything that's going, I, I, I got you. We build respect. That's why they're gonna do for us. And that's what uh, that's goats, cows, uh, uh, I'm not 100% sure on sheep, but I've seen my neighbor work with them. It's the same way. That's why they don't run away. Dogs, horses, donkeys, all these animals, they want us to respect them, understand them, understand the, the limitations and boundaries that they have. Not, not just forcing ourselves on them and demanding that this is what you have to do. Trust me, I've done all this. I've tried all this. I, I've done the whole, you better, you better because I said so. That's how me and this dog started working together. Me and Johnny, man, it was, it was, it was I said down, you better do it. And I realized, did he, would he do it? Yeah, but I needed an e-collar on him. I needed a prong collar on him. Like those are the only two pieces of equipment that worked on this dog. Slip leash didn't work. Uh, martingales didn't work. Nothing worked. You had to go to say the, I don't like them terms because it's, it's technically not true, but the most harshest form of tool to be able to use. That's the only thing that worked. We were bad and we were fighting. And I, I, I've tried all this and I really, it doesn't work. The dog wants me to respect him and trust him. It's all right. Everything's gonna be okay. And that's, that's something that we, we, we have to do. And the only way we're getting that respect is by showing them that they can respect us because they can see that we are able to get them into a better place. We are able to guide them through the things that they're scared of. We are able to push them past it and look at it like, that's nothing. The dog is gonna look at you and say, wow, you're not, you're not scared. <laughs> it, it might be a little scary for most all of us. I see them here and there, these bobcats, and the, I've seen a mountain lion once, and I'm just like, you know, uh, let's just get out of here with that one. But uh, uh, anything else, like we're not scared of a garbage truck. We're not scared of a bus. Well, I'm scared of a bus if I'm standing in the street. But if I'm not standing in the middle of the street and there's a bus coming at me and going 80 miles an hour, I'm not scared of it sitting on a sidewalk away from it. I'm not scared of it. I'm not scared of people that are just walking by doing what they're doing. I'm not scared of them. I'm not scared of dogs that are just running around doing what they're doing. I'm not scared of them. And the dog's gonna look at me and just say, how are you not scared of these things? They're terrifying to me. And, and through time, that's what the dog's gonna say, uh, man, this person's not scared of anything. And you shouldn't be in reality. And that's what's gonna get the dogs to be able to finally look at you and just calm down and just say, you, you, dude, take, what do you call it? Jesus, take the wheel. You got it, man, take it. 
you you take care of all this for me, man. I got I, I don't need to I don't need to do anything. I don't need to be on alert out here. I don't need to be on guard. I don't need to be on nothing. You got it. And I'm like, yeah, I got it. And that's when a dog just just stops and just chills. You start with small things at first. You start with small stuff. Your dog is afraid of loud noises. This is something that gets a lot of dogs, loud noises in the house. This can start priming you for thunderstorms and fireworks. You drop something in the kitchen. You drop a plastic cup at first, and you just have the dog on a leash, and you drop the plastic cup. It, it drops. The dog's going to, it's going to move, and you just stand there. You just drop another one. You make a little bit more noise and more noise and more noise and more noise and you keep going. And the dog eventually is just going to stand there and just look at it. He's going to watch it drop. He's going, oh, oh, there's another one. There's another one. And just be chill. And then after a while, he's more likely just going to lay down and relax. Like, I've already seen that. I've already done it. He could take 15 times, 20 times. He could take 150 times. But you just stay at it. You just keep keep dropping up. A little, little, I got these little uh, kids plastic cups, little things. Just drop the, drop the cup. And then you can get to the point of moving to a pan. You can tap the pans together. The dog, oh my goodness, it freaks out. And you just look at him like, okay. And just tap the pans together. And the dog's going to get through it. He's going to get through it. They always get through it. And they get to the point that it's just, oh, that's just background noise. You got uh, 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 like tools in your house. You got drills. You got saws. You got all these things. We got all these things that the dogs are more like vacuum cleaners. A lot of y'all, your dogs are attacking the vacuum cleaner like savage is attacking it because it's trying to kill it, because it's trying to get it out of there, because it's terrified of it. You start that thing up over there, you have the dog on leash. Dog on leash, you turn it off, you turn it on, you turn it off. They got these cool things at the, uh, the Home Depot that you can get a, a, a remote power switch so you can turn it on and off from a distance. You can put the thing back over there and you can turn it on. And you can turn it stand in here away from it. And the dog's gonna freak out. The dogs might even try to lunge at it and try to like go crazy at it. And you just wait. You just wait. Dog calms down, cool. And then I can shut it off. Awesome. Turn it back on. Dog's gonna freak out. Turn it off. Okay. All these things. We gotta work them through all these things. Your dog is freaking out over the broom. My, all these things, we just work them through. You got your dog on a leash, you get your you ain't got a spouse, you ain't got no kids, you, you get a buddy over and you say, I'll get you something to eat tonight and just have him do some fake sweeping and have your dog freaking out at that broom. After a while, he's going to calm down. Once he calms down, that's when you go, oh, good boy, good job, good, I like this, this is nice, this is real nice. And that's when you start doing that. You just work him through all these small things. And the dog's going to, whatever, whatever, everything is fine, everything is okay. Your dog is terrified of big trucks, you go somewhere, big trucks always are. You just stand there and hang out. Your dog is afraid of airplanes. I don't know what to do about the airplanes. But trains, you go to somewhere where there's trains and you just hang out. You just chill. Busy, busy, interested, busy places where there's a lot of people that are walking. A lot of people walking. You just hang out. You get yourself a little bit of a distance. Then they calm down. And then a little bit closer, a little bit, not to the point that you're gone, that the dog is not reacting at all. You got to the, get the dogs in his emotions a little bit to, to get past it and deal with it. So you're going to already start somewhat in the thick of it, where the dog is already like going a little crazy. And he's going to calm down and say, oh, oh, there's just people walking by. And then you move a little bit closer. Oh, there's still just people. And you can put him right in the middle of it. And there's just people walking around. And he's just looking up like, oh, there's just, there's just, there's just people all around. Yeah, yeah, man, there's this, <laughs> nothing to worry about. You pay attention to me, and I'm going to give you the safety that you're looking for. Me, me. You ain't got to go out there and, and defend and fight and do anything crazy. You just pay attention to me. I'm going to do it all for you. And man, that is how you get your dogs to calm down. It's got, in reality, nothing to do with the next greatest, best training method. It has everything to do with just getting up and going and doing and making it happen. And a lot of this, we can start inside of our households without having to go anywhere. I, I prefer you to start in your household. The simple things I'm telling you, simple drop, a, drop of a cup, a simple move of a pot, a simple start in the vacuum up, a simple uh, uh, drill in your hand, a sim these simple sounds. All this, 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 these simple things. TV is getting dogs jammed up today. These, it's the commercials on the TVs mainly that are getting the dogs wild. You get you a thing, you're watching the commercials, you're going to stand there, you're going to hang out. The dog's going to freak out. The uh, uh, people playing uh, tennis and stuff on TV and playing and baseball gets a lot of dogs, especially a lot of these collies and a lot of these shepherds. They, they see that ball moving, they're just like, oh my God, I gotta go get it. You're just going to stand there and hang out. Eventually, sit there and hang out. Eventually, the dog's just going to hang out and it's just going to be over with. You just put them through it and put them through it instead of trying to make them uh, uh, run away from it. Like, don't, oh, I know this commercial's coming up, change it. No, let's go through this now. Because the more that you try to do this trickery of, oh, I'm going to run away from it, that's where the dogs are losing trust in you. They're losing respect in you. They're not appreciating you because they're just, they're, they're, they're like, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't follow something that's weaker than me is what the dogs are literally saying to us. 
They're looking for somebody confident, and it has nothing to do with going out and giving a speech to a million people. It has nothing to do with, with getting yourself and starting up your own YouTube show and YouTube channel. It's got nothing to do with any of that. If you're not strong enough to do that, that th that's not going to mean that you're not going to be able to build the confidence in your dog. You're not able to just stand up to people that are talking to you. You're not able to just do certain things. That's, that's a different kind of confidence that we as humans like to think, oh, what confidence is? A person that is, that is able to just, just speak up and, and assert themselves. That's not confidence. And in reality, a lot of that is, is fake. <laughs> it just is what it is. A lot of it isn't, isn't reality. A lot of it is just, 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 a t just a TV show. And the dogs are looking for uh, the realness. And the realness is just the simple things that we do throughout the day. Dogs, anytime you see them scared, you 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 just you put a mental note and say we're gonna, we're gonna work. If you ain't got time that second to work on it, you're gonna say I'm gonna I'm getting back to that. And you can write it down on the list and say I'm gonna work on this. My dog, I don't know why, got scared when such and such drove by the house. My dog got scared when such and such knocked on the door like this. My dog got scared when I moved this and did this to something in the house. You're gonna start to note all of these things, and you, then you start to attack that list. And then you'll notice that each thing that you start attacking on that list, you're going to see that your dog through the next one, it's going to be easier. The next one, it'll be easy. It'll just get easier and easier and easier. So when you put your dog into something extreme, oh, trying to get down. When you put your dog in through something extreme, such as taking them to the buses and they're like super stressed and you finally get them past that, the next thing on that list that you're like, oh, people, he's not cool being around a lot of people. You're going to notice that that's going to be way easier way easier. That's why I say to start with smaller things and then move to the bigger ones. The dog will get confidence with you with the small things and trust you and say, oh, that's cool. We're good. And then the next, and then the next, and then the next, and then the next. And you just keep on going. And for some of y'all, the next, the biggest step is your dog seeing another dog flipping out on the other side of the leash. That's going to be the, the biggest thing, but you don't want to start with that. You want to start with other things so that your dog, Johnny, you can go, you can go, you can chase the chickens. You want to start with something simple so the dog knows that it for sure can trust you. It can listen to you. It can take your guidance. And then you're going to see just an extreme amount of success. Like, I, I, I can't teach you a better sit-stay or down-stay or any of these things to get your dog better. It just, it can get your dog to be easier to work with with you. You can get your dog to, to, to be able to do cool little things to, to simplify your life some. But as far as getting your dog to be able to really just respect you, it doesn't come down to that. It, it, it really doesn't. It comes down to the, the simple things that we do each day with our dogs to just really let them know that we're, we're here for them and we're going to do for them regardless. I know you're tired right now, but we got things we got to do. I know it's cold out right now, but we got some things that we have to do. I know you're not really feeling the best right now, but more than likely, the one thing that's going to be able to make you feel better is to do something with your dog. That's an incredible, they're just like a, a godsend to us to be able to do certain things that they, they, they are able to assist you in ways that I don't think you really understand yet. That if you're, you're down and out right now and you're looking at your dog like, oh my goodness, I don't wanna, the getting up and doing something, it's that hard to just start it. It's, it's, like, it's, it's just that first five second push. It may be five minutes, but as soon as you get in it, you're like, oh, here we are. And it could be a cold walk at night. And, and it's some, some of those nights, those, those are mostly the best times. Not that you're running away from the world, but you're just in peace. You go for an eight o'clock walk, it's pretty dark out. A lot of y'all neighborhoods are super safe. And uh, uh, that's why I say carry something with you. Not no, no, no pistols, none of that, but, but just get, get you a big uh, baton stick if a dog comes running up on you. And just, you just do this. You, you wave in the dog's face if a random loose dog comes running up to you. That's gonna make the dog leave you. It's not gonna mess with you if you just you, you do some silly stuff like that. But uh, it's, it's cold, it's quiet, it's calm, and then you're five minutes into it and you start to just get this, this man, life is good because now we're just in this moment. And that's what dogs are all about in this moment. And they're like, man, this is good. I like this. This is nice right now. This, this, I could, I like, I like, and then it just makes you feel better. And it just builds your confidence up, which your dog is going to see from you. And it's going to say, yeah, I like this too. And then that's where your relationship is going to get better because you're doing for the dog instead of trying to run away from it. A lot of times we're running away from things that we need a, a the biggest, I'm going to end right here on, how we as human beings need to build our confidence. And a lot of times we don't have any sort of confidence and we're lacking and we're struggling and we're, we're shorthanding ourselves because we, we just don't do what it is that we know that we need to do. We delay it and delay it and delay it. The more that we do that, the more that we just look at ourselves and just say, I'm, I'm a pitiful human being. 
I'm no good. What, I'm not, I, I don't ever get nothing done. And it's got nothing to do with what anyone else is doing, but just us ourselves, just not getting up and getting it done. That's what we're struggling the absolute most with. Once we just get up and do it and make it happen, you get the inspiration of, I should go ahead and make it happen. Even though it sucks, it, I mean, it comes down to cleaning and organizing and, and cooking some food. It sucks for a moment, but you just, you just get up and you just make it happen. And you're gonna notice that everything is gonna get better and better. That's building your own confidence with your own self even. That's something that, you know, a lot of people ask me why I state my birthday up front. That's like a, a 15, 50, that's a 50 video uh, uh, see, uh, series right there on that simple, very simple concept of why I do that. And I'm not really there yet to, to talk about that. I gotta talk about some dogs right now. But uh, th that's, that's like, that's like a, in reality, a lifetime that I could talk about. My name and my birthday. Something to me that is, is very interesting. It's very interesting, and, and it, it's, it's allowed me to be able to see who I am, what I've done, where I came from, and where I'm going to continue to keep on going. But the main thing is just see where I am right now, where I am right this second, right this, this day of the January, what is it, 16, 18, 17, uh, the January of the 18th, where I am right now, what I'm seeing right now, how it's starting to get cold again. I can feel my hands. I'm seeing my dogs having a good time just chasing, chasing around this coop. It's, it's getting super calm out here. The cars are starting to slow down. Just right here, right now, there's something powerful about just being able to experience that. And I would want more people to experience what it is that dogs experience, because that's how they live, right now. And when you get up and do something with them, they're gonna look at you like you were the world's greatest thing on the planet. Thank you.